Okay, so I think I ran out of time and as a result of it, we are not able to do solve this particular problem. Okay, let me continue with this. Let me just explain what we have done so far. We had the sun here and uh, I'll just start this timer once again, 8 minutes. I don't think it will be ending by 8 minutes, it will take 10 minutes also because the problem is a bit uh, higher, right, okay. So, we had the sun here and the planet earth over here and the sun was radiating energy in all over the points and as a result of it we found out what is the average intensity which is falling on to the earth's orbit and then we also came to know that uh, when the sun rays, when the radiation enters the earth's atmosphere, part of it is uh, getting reflected and uh, some of them are getting absorbed. And we came to know about the albedo, 30% of it is get reflected or scattered or 70% enters. So hence we found out what was the intensity uh, of radiation that falls onto the solar, solar panel which is seen to be 966 watt per square meter. Okay, this is what we have found out. The next thing is what we did was, now we are not looking at the uh, solar panel but instead we are asking about what is the average intensity incident on the earth's surface. When you take about average, you need to take the full earth over here. Okay. So, as a result of it, what we do, we have taken 966 watt per square meter is nothing but the intensity which is falling on to the earth surface per square meter. That is what we have found. Now, if that is the case, if I take the full circle because you know this is the sun over here and this is the earth over here. So, the sun if it sees the earth, it will be looking less, just like a disk and hence in this disk, you will be able to see only a radius of pi r square where r here is not this distance, okay. This distance is d, r here is nothing but the radius of the earth, radius of earth, right. So, therefore, pi r square. So, now if I multiply this one by pi r square, what do I get? I get the power over here. What is the power? Power incident on the full circular disk that I have, okay. When I see from outside, I am able to see only as a two-dimensional plane. I am not able to see as a fully three-dimensional object. Right? So, therefore, it is pi divided by r square over here. But if I want to get the complete intensity, average intensity, what should I do? I should take this p divided by 4 pi r square. Once again, what is 4 pi r square? The entire surface area of the globe that we have. Right? Okay. So, which should now be equal to 966 divided by into pi r square divided by 4 pi r square. Okay. So, what is this now? This is your intensity, average intensity on the earth. Okay. So, this pi r square, pi r square goes away. So, you are left out with 966 divided by 4. So, what is that value? Let us do that. Where is the calculator here? 966 by 4. 966 divided by 4 will be 241.5. 241.5 which is nearly equivalent to 242 watt per square meter as expected. Okay. Now, let us move on to the next one. Assuming that the earth's surface behaves as a black body. The moment there is a black body radiation, what should you have in mind? There is a Stefan's law coming here, Stefan's law, right? What is Stefan's law? So, the intensity is equal to sigma t power 4. There is no E here. Why E is not there? Because it says black body. For black body, E is equal to 1, emissivity. That no energy is absorbed by the atmosphere. Use your answer in D to show that the average temperature of the surface is predicted to be 256 Kelvin. Now, what I should do? Intensity is already got in a sigma t power 4. Now, what is this now? Sigma t power 4 should be equated to which one? This should be equated to a, this should be equated to 242. Why 242? Where is the 242 coming here? It is coming here. What is this actually? Assuming earth to be a black body, which means what? Whatever radiation we receive on the earth surface, I am going to re-radiate it backwards, right? That is your black body. So, therefore, so uh, earth is now receiving an average intensity of 242, I am going to re-radiate it back, okay. So, therefore, now I am going to equate this one here, thus I can find out the value of T, which is T power 4 is equal to 242 by sigma. Now, I can substitute the value of this sigma, which is Stefan's constant, which is 5.67 into 10 to the power of minus 8, minus 8, which is your Stefan's constant, you can get it from your data booklet. So, when I do this, take up my calculator once again, pull this upwards a little bit. So, I get 242 divided by 5.67 comes out to be around 42.68, right, which should be 42.68. I need the value of T, which should be equal to, uh, and there is a 10 power minus 8. When it goes upwards, it becomes a 10 power plus 8. 
So 42.68 into 10 to the power of 8 whole to the power of 1 fourth. What will this be? Now once again let me use my calculator. So what do I have here? 42.68. I want to find out what is the power of 1 fourth. What is 1 fourth? 0 0.25, right? The power of 0 0.25 when I do, I get the answer is 2.55. This should be 2.55. And uh, this also applies for 10 power 8. 10 power 8 will be what? 10 power 8 whole to the power of 1 by 4 will be 10 square. 10 square. Thus the answer should be 255 Kelvin. Can we do it correctly? Let us look, look at this. 255.59. Right. Oh, I am sorry. This should be 2.556 over here, which should be nearly 255.6 Kelvin. Now, what is the question here? The question here is 256. Predicted to be 256. Uh, so any answer which lies between 255 to 256 is valid. So you have got the correct answer, right? So how much marks? Two marks over here. First one is explain the Stefan Boltzmann law. And second one is get the answer over here. Okay. Now let us move on to the next one. Outline with reference to the greenhouse effect. Why the average surface temperature of the earth is higher than 256 Kelvin? Why is it high? How do you know it's higher or not? What is 256 Kelvin? 256 Kelvin, if you convert this into degree Celsius, uh, this will be... 256 minus 273. When you do this, how much is it? Uh, 13 minus 6. So let, let me do it. We are all being addicted to calculators, right? Okay, so 273 minus 256 is equal to 17. So this should be minus 17 degrees centigrade. So are we living in minus 17 degrees centigrade? No, we are above minus 17. We are at 40 degrees centigrade, right? So why does this happen? Okay, this is for 4 mark, which means logical reason should be there. The first reason why we have it is that a lot of pollutants. What are the pollutants? The pollutants are carbon dioxide, methane, methane, then you have water vapor and so on. So all these pollutants okay, will create a layer in the atmosphere. They create a layer in the atmosphere. So what does it do? It reflects, it reflects the outgoing radiation, outgoing radiation, which means what? If this is the earth over here, now there is a cloud here of all these gases because of automobile pollution or cutting out of the trees and so on. So all these gases, all this radiation goes over here, okay, earth acting as a black body and hence it reflects back like this, right? So this is the first reason. So it reflects it. So the second reason, it reflects back like this. And the third point that you can make it is that radiation, some of these radiations, some of these, some of these radiations, some of these radiations, okay, get back to earth, get back to earth, right? Because now when the earth is reflecting, so sorry, when the, when the atmosphere is reflecting, it need not reflect like this. It can scatter like this also, right? It can scatter everywhere like this over here. So some of this get back to it. And this contributes to a heating effect, heating effect, so of the earth. And this in turn leads to higher temperatures, higher temperatures of the earth. Now what is the current temperature of the earth? Okay, average could be around 27, but some places you see, it will be going to 40 degrees centigrade, 45 degrees centigrade during hot summers. This is what is happening. So, thus you see, it gives us higher temperatures. Thus, the temperature becomes higher, right? Already we have crossed 8 minutes at any time. Okay, we have finished this also. Okay, fine. So, we will stop here. Now, let, let us go to the next video in the next class. Okay.